Shalom friends and welcome to House of David. Well, today we're going to continue talking about first book of Thessalonians chapter 5 and learn great things there that every believer must be acquainted with. It's important to know what God speaks to us through His Word, and especially when He is making us ready. God is making us ready for His second coming. We must be ready. Jesus is coming soon. Well, in a moment, we're going to go and show you that last part of this message. Tomorrow, we're going to show you something else. But today, we're going to be finishing first the book of Thessalonians, chapter 5. And after this message, I'll be back here and believe God for your miracle and see what God is going to do in your life today. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. And then verse 15 says, See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. That verse is so much important right now. I want you to see that. After all that Paul said, he says, see, he says, be careful that no one renders evil for evil. So if somebody begins to justify somebody or correct somebody, don't be careful when you do that. Because other person may start to do likewise against you. You know, it's so easy would be and will become so easy if somebody will start correct somebody and on constant basis, somebody will get aggravated and start correcting the same person because nobody's perfect. We can always find some kind of fault. And then the war will start. That happens not only in the church, that happens in the family. That happens in the world. Everybody is trying to justify somebody and correct somebody all the time. Before we do that, we got to look at ourselves, make sure that we are ready to do that. Jesus was able to do that. He was sinless. He says, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And he says, and I will not, even I will not judge you. Even he didn't do that. He could have. But even him, he didn't do that. Why? Because for the sake of that woman, to get her saved, to get her attention that God is love. Amen? God is mercy. God is not just the laws and regulations. By the way, laws and regulations are for the people that are solidly standing in the Lord. That they know how to handle it. But everybody is under the really driving on mercy. <laughs> on mercy. Amen. Remember. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. So let us not just start this justified facts between each other. Let us look into Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Let us just wait for him in peace. Do you know when we keep peace, that is the greatest miracle would be. And the most powerful anointing, by the way, is where people recognize who they are. They don't judge each other. Give, bring peace. And that's where the anointing moves because some kind of a unity spirit is there for the Spirit of God to move. I hope you understood what I said. But you know, you, you get a bunch of righteous people in one room. You know what's going to happen in one hour? They're going to justify their righteousness that my righteousness is greater than yours. And they're going to start fighting about their own righteousness and holiness. See what I mean? Because I do what you don't do, and you don't do what I do. And you should do what I do, and I do what you should do now. Yeah. God says, sit down. Find peace among yourselves. He says, nobody is righteous here but Jesus. Amen? Amen. A lot of times we brag about our anointing. 
it's not my anointing, it's not your anointing, it's not, it's God's. We cannot do that. We have to humble ourselves. We know who we are. The best field of your spiritual life is within yourself. You got a lot of things to work with. You know that. You got a big field. You can prophesy to yourself. You can pray for yourself. You can encourage yourself. You can do whatever because you know yourself very well. Amen. We know who we are in Christ. You know, I've, lear I've learned one thing that the real prophets of God, real prophets of God, they are meek. They are very, very meek. You will never hear from them until God will speak. They don't just come through the door and say, I am the prophet. You, you come, sit down, we'll prophesy. People's lives were destroyed because of people like that. People that stepping in into, maybe they are prophets, maybe they are, but not ready. And a lot of lives were destroyed because they spoke things that were not of God, it was their flesh. And people got confused, destroyed, discouraged, disappointed. The body of Christ dwells in a different way. First, it's peace. Until we'll find peace among ourselves, there will be no prophets. The anointing will be very rare. Until we'll find that peace, until we'll find that, uh, uh, you know, harmony. Look at this. Paul said, yeah, we don't have to talk to you about the seasons, about his coming. But he says, what I want to really talk to you, it's about how you behave with each other. Here's the question. Do you appreciate one another? Do you really appreciate one another? You know, not because what they do, but because who they are. Amen? And then, live in peace. Don't try to correct. That's the not, this is not the right way to start. I've learned in, I've, I've been traveling a lot. I made a lot of miles in my life through this through Canada and U.S. And I've been to some churches, some Slavic churches, that are very religious. Religious churches, they are under the law, not of God, but they are under the law of their own, I would say, strongholds. And if you are not just like them, they will never accept you. Never. You have to look like them. You have to wear how they dress. You have to be just like them. You have to talk like they talk. Very religious. It's sad. But they found themselves in that situation. And that's who they are. And any outsiders that come out from the outside, they got shocked. Because... See, the church, God had never an a, a, a intention for the church to become a cult. You know what cult is? Something distinct, something is different. People come and they got shocked. It's, it's some kind of group of people that they have their own things, and that's how they run, they rule. You heard about the church in Texas, right? Snakes. You heard about the snakes church? It's, they speak in tongues, and what they believe, they take Mark 16 literally. If they drink anything poison, shall not harm you. So they play with deadly poison snakes. They take them in their hands and carry them in a service like that, and dance with them. Do you know that they have a cemetery behind the church? Two pastors already died, and their son, 21 years old, he's already been beaten once. Thank God he survived. 
but they believe and they drink, but they think if they be, be bitten by the snake, it's the will of God and we die. We go to heaven. And they speak in tongues. They've been actually, they've been interviewed by major television radio stations. Would you like to come to church like this? You'll be tested by a, a snake. You're going to have to take it into your hands and dance and praise God with it. That'll be a test. I mean, how can you bring anybody to the Lord this way? Unless you're going to tell them, unless you take it, you better accept Jesus or we're going to give you the snake. <laughs> They'll accept it faster, yeah. You see what I mean? That's a cult. To me, it's cult. Jesus said, come to me, receive the freedom and liberty where people love each other, understand each other, they're friends, they're brothers and sisters. It's something that the world cannot offer. But here, some churches offering more bondage to the world that they are into. Who wants this kind of salvation? Oh God, help us. Are you with me? I'm not saying you're going to be a sinner like they are. No, I'm not saying that. That's where the distinction is. We are different from them because we don't do what they do in the world. But when they come here, they have to see something better than the world offers. Amen. Families are destroyed in the world. There's no unity in the families. Mo majority of families are not good. They're, they're just d dysfunctional. They have issues between brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, and this and that, and they don't talk for none, for whatever reason. You come to church, you see almost the same thing. That's not what God taught. You saw God said, let them be one as we are one. Let them be one. When these things happen, when God brings things together, He brings the power can you imagine God brings the power and people see people are off the wall and there's a power of God? How can it be? How can God move with His power compromising His own things? It's not God. It's our flesh. But the real power is going to be where we're going to have the unity. Peace. How do we do that? We start with ourselves. If everybody will start with our own. See, you're going to have good fruits in your yard if you're going to start cultivating your yard. But if you're jumping in and cultivating somebody else's yard, you have no fruit on your own. You start with your own yard. We have to begin to work on ourselves. And as a, a, a minister, as a rabbi, as a pastor, I work on myself first. I look through every situation that I deal with people with. And believe me, we're going through a lot because people are we all people. And uh, we are the leaders, so we face first, right? And then I'm thinking after that, how can I deal with this situation to bring peace and to stop this and to turn the page? Amen? We need to work on that ourselves. And remember... Before we're going to start accusing somebody else, please have wisdom. If you should do that, what is it going to bring? And even if you need to talk to somebody, you have to have wisdom. A lot of wisdom. Because remember, we cannot change anybody. We cannot change nobody. It is God who changes people. I worked very hard on my wife, <laughs> very hard, so many years, and I realized it was all in vain, for nothing. Because the more actually I was pushing the button, the more she was aggravated and angry. I said, God, I'm not touching this woman. I mean, you don't know what I mean? I said, you work on her. It's not in my, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm pushing the wrong button. God says, hands off. Don't touch. I said, yes, sir. 
Look, she became, she, she's becoming beautiful. It works. It works. Because God is the one who is doing things. And if God can do it, if God cannot do it, do you think I can? See what I mean? No, God can do all things. But if... <laughs> Hallelujah. Wisdom is very important. Very important. Because we could be very emotional, friends. At times, we could be very emotional. And start expressing our emotions. It runs off of us like a sweat. Just, oh, it just goes down. Then you feel bad. By the way, I'll give you one hint. After any fight with anybody, whether it's your kids, your wife, your husband, your neighbor, your brother, sisters, whatever you argument you have, you will never feel the victory. You always feel more hurt and separated. Why? Because it doesn't bring victory. You know what brings victory? God. Yeah. I'm not talking about peace. I'm talking about, oh yeah, I changed that person. See? That's it. No. Usually it's the other way around. It looks a different way. But when you leave things alone, God brings things. Oh man, it works everything well. So what we are here for? We are here to explain these matters, to help each other. Amen? You know why the Bible says that uh, silence is gold? You know why the Bible says that our tongue is like a, a little, little steering wheel on a big ship? That little steering wheel could turn the whole ship around. Our tongue is the smallest member, the Bible says, but it brings the biggest damage. You know why people say sometimes, bite your tongue? Because when it's bitten, you don't talk much. It's painful. <laughs> it's important. It's important to be in control of these little members. Amen. And then after all, God says, rejoice always. Pray without season. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. You see, but until these things, we got to learn how to live together. Amen. And it's not only in the church, my friends. God is interested in our life completely, in our marriage life, in our life with our neighbors, workers, co-workers, anywhere you are. I've noticed that our tongue can bring a lot of damage. Damage. We don't want to do that. Wisdom is very important. And I've learned another thing. When we use wisdom, God pours the anointing, the real anointing. Oh, God pours real anointing. Learn from Jesus how he maintained his life with sinners. He would go to the Places where people drink and eat. And he would not condemn them. He would sit down around them and give them a nice story. A parable. Because he said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to save. If God really just wanted to condemn the world, it would be one split second. It would be done a long time ago like it was done with Noah's flood. But he says, no, that's not the way I'm going to do because God has wisdom. He understands these things don't work. They are motivated by the world, the flesh, and the devil. And God has nothing to do with this. We need to learn that. 
When we're going to learn this kind of wisdom, friends, you will be the most anointed person. And God is going to bless you. And anywhere you are, people will like you because there's something to learn from you. The world doesn't have that. They always argue. They're in competition. They always, somebody's wrong. You see what I mean? But this is what God gives us as a distinction that the world cannot have. It comes only from Him. His character. It's all His. Amen and amen and amen. What a wonderful and mighty God we serve. Are you excited about Jesus? Are you excited about God in your life? Do you know that God never changes? He always is on the go. He is moving all the time. And He wants us to move with Him. Jesus said something really wonderful to Nicodemus. He says, you don't know where the wind is coming from or where it's going to. But you see what happens. The same thing with the Spirit. We never know how and when God will come and visit us unexpectedly. But we we are going to witness this. Amen. And this is what I, my desire is to witness the power and the miracles and the revival of God the Almighty. Praise be to God. And today is the new day. And God is, uh, has made this day for you. And He wants to touch your life again. Amen. So let me pray for you and believe God for a miracle. I don't know who is watching us. I don't know your name. I never probably saw you. Maybe I did. But I will be praying for you, believing God, that God is going to use us to reach out and touch your life. Thank you, Father, in the name of Yeshua, I give you praise and I pray for everyone who is watching us today. I pray, Lord God, for your healing anointing, for your healing power to come and visit people's homes right now. They watch in our telecast. Lord, I just pray that everything that you've spoken through me, through this programming, Lord, will reach out their hearts help us to change our minds more toward Jesus. Lord, help us to be, become more and more like you. I pray, Father, continue to change us, continue to help us, continue to set us free, my Lord, so that we may be obedient to you and we may be yielding to you and doing your perfect will. Thank you for, for your presence, my Lord, and thank you for your anointing. Now I give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody has a pain right here, right from here, going down to your throat. And God, I believe, is touching you right now and healing that pain in the name of Jesus. Friends, can I encourage you, when you receive a miracle, when you receive a healing or anything that God has given you through this ministry, can you share that with us? I would really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much for your support. As you understand, probably you don't know, but summertime is always slow, but the bills are still coming and the, the price is the same. So we need to cover our bills. We need to catch up with our bills. So why don't you just uh, help us a little bit more this time if you can. Or you would like to be become a partner in the, of this ministry, please give us a call and become our partner today. And we would really, really appreciate by being a partner with us. Now, um, Halifax, uh, we're coming for miracle meetings for one night only on Thursday, August the 14th. At 7 p.m., we're going to be at the Holiday Inn, Halifax, Harbor View and Conference Center at Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And St. John's, Newfoundland, we're coming to visit you for one night as well with Miracle Meetings on the Friday, the August, August the 15th at 7 p.m. We're going to be at the Comfort Inn, St. John's Airport Hotel, 106 Airport Road. St. John's, Newfoundland. And that would be on Friday night on August the 15th at 7 p.m. Come and be on both meetings, however you can, if you're in the area, in, in, in Halifax and St. John's, Newfoundland, and expect God a miracle because He is going to give you one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And may God continue to bless you and fill you with, you with His presence, power, and love. God bless you and see you next time. Shalom.
House of David Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.